Today, we're moving my 1967 Bridgeport milling machine. We gotta pick it up and get it on a trailer so I can get it the heck out of here. Let's get into it. Well, it's gonna about break my heart, but I decided I needed to sell my Bridgeport milling machine just to make room for what I really do in my shop most of the time, which is CNC machining. And so uh, I've done this before, it's not that hard, and I wanna show you guys how I do it. So old machines like this aren't really that expensive if you know where to look, especially if you live like in the Northeast and in the Midwest. All this stuff has been sort of orphaned by industry and you can get it pretty cheap, but if you have to hire riggers and pay like a legitimate price to have someone move it for you, that could double or triple the cost of these things sometimes, uh, depending on the lay of the land. And a lot of times it's pretty easy to move these. And so uh, I had to figure out how to do this on my own. There wasn't a lot of good information. I'm gonna share with you my favorite tricks. So. The machine weighs about 2,000 pounds, and uh, you need to get it up off the ground and build sort of a pallet under it. So this isn't like a traditional looking pallet, but the idea is the same. You need to lift it up off the ground so that you can roll a pallet jack, which is like uh, 27 or whatever it is inches wide. You need to be able to fit that under the machine. and so. This is a hybrid here. I built this base with the square tube a couple years ago, and normally I have these four leveling feet that go under it that are machined, and, uh, and I can adjust them and I can get the machine level. But to move it, I, uh, I replaced those with these four by four skids just to give it better uh, sort of contact with the trailer so it's more stable. But what it does is it lifts the machine up and it creates a cove underneath where I can just roll in this pallet jack. And so that's the whole secret. A pallet jack will lift 5,500 pounds. You just roll it under, you crank it up, and you can scoot it around the shop. It's super easy, it's super convenient. And, um, and when you go to move it, you still use the pallet jack if you don't need to go up, uh, up and down you know, steps and stuff. And so how do you get it lifted up high enough to build a pallet under it. That's probably something a lot of people are wondering. And uh, it's tricky and you need to be very careful. It's inherently dangerous work, but it's not that complicated. And so you get something like this. This is called a Matic tool. It's just a crude fabricated uh, pry bar. And so because of this cutout that bridge ports have, uh, you can kind of get under it and you can pick it up. And you get a lot of force just lifting like this. And then you use something like these wood blocks. It's just like a big door stopper. You just kind of slide that under a little bit while you're prying up and uh, you know you put a couple thin blocks up front and then you go to the back and you can kind of go back and forth you know half of an inch or an inch at a time and very slowly and methodically carefully you lift it up until it's high enough that then you can stick some uh, some cross pieces and then you can fabricate a pallet in place and then uh, and then you have your pallet and you can uh, you can actually roll a pallet jack right under this and so uh, I would recommend making a base like this anyway even if you weren't going to move it uh, they're just you know for me I think it's nice to lift the machine up off the floor a little bit and for all the times that uh, you want to scoot it around the shop it's pretty sweet to be able to just roll a pallet jack right under it let's crank this baby up. This is the next huge piece of the puzzle. This is like a drop deck trailer, and I rented this. It was uh, two days rental, was 200 bucks. It's a little bit less if you just do one day, of course. And uh, I got this from Sunbelt Rentals. There's different places that will rent you this kind of thing. And there's also other kinds of trailers that also work pretty well. There's ones that are called like no ramp trailers, and even tilt bed trailers can be okay. What you want is something that will like either drop or tilt uh, so that it's it's pretty easy like the, the incline isn't really steep or there isn't like a shelf that you need to get up uh, Some sort of jump or something right and so this if you uh, When you rent this there's like batteries in here, and there's motors and so if you pull this release and then you push this I mean that's amazing so this thing just lowered to the ground pretty close to the ground. There's not a lot of elevation gain between where the machine is and where it needs to be. And then for any of that slope, where I need a little muscle to help me along, I have a come along. And these are pretty cheap, they provide a lot of leverage, and you can have a pretty slow and controlled uh, sort of like lifting as you sort of winch it up onto the trailer. And so that's the next step here. <sighs> Hook this baby up here. I wouldn't want to pull too hard on that, you know, I mean, the casting is made to support normal loads and whatever, uh, but this should roll pretty smoothly. I don't think I'm going to break it. I'll just be aware of how hard I'm tugging. Okay. 
So I got some tension on this cable and uh, right now it's sitting on the pallet. I'm gonna jack it up some more so that it's on the wheels. Now this is kind of top heavy. That's probably the trickiest part of this. You'll see that the motor I've actually taken off. This is a step pulley model of the bridge port and so it's not that hard to take the motor right off. And that's, you know, another, I don't know, 40 pounds right at the top. So that helps a little bit. There's no vice on the table, but it's still top heavy. I'm gonna go slow and careful and I'm glad that I have the width of the base. Uh, you know, we just gotta be mindful of uh, the tippiness of it. So, uh, you know, I, there's these D-rings on the side, and I've just kind of exhausted the, uh, the stroke of this thing. I'm starting to pull at a, at a, you know, real crooked angle here. So I'm just going to reconnect up by the front and then, uh, and then pull it the rest of the way on. All right, so I'm reconnected in the front. So now it's sort of on the level of the trailer. And it's a little bit bumpy and I think it's slightly downhill here, but uh, I, I can almost just push it around by hand again. And so, you know, of course I needed to come along to help get it up, uh, but now that it's on here, uh, you know, I think I'll be able to maneuver it. I want to get it centered real good. You want to get the weight a little bit ahead of the axles or, you know, at least more on the front axle. So you have a li little bit of tongue weight uh, on, the, on the trailer and um, it's pretty simple. So I got it centered up side to side pretty good, and I got it front to back, I think about where I want it, so it's a little bit more to the front of the trailer. And uh, we're just gonna leave the pallet jack on here, because I'll use that to unload it when we get there. Um, so now I, I just gotta lift it up again. And this is beautiful. So now I'm against the, uh, I'm against the catch here. Yeah, this is a little safety thing or something. I think you want to be against that. So I got four of these heavy two inch wide ratchet straps. I don't know exactly what these are rated for, but they're pretty heavy duty. And uh, and I think you would want to have at least two of them. You know, I don't really know the, the rules of the road exactly, but uh, four is, should be pretty good. You just want to keep it real secure so it's not going anywhere uh, when it's going down the road. That's the last thing you want. You know, you don't want to be dangerous with it. <laughs> So I'm just trying to, you know, make this neat and orderly so it's not flapping in a breeze. And uh, I don't know if there's a better way to do this, but this is how I've been doing it. <laughs> just fold it over itself as neatly as you can and then wrap it up with some good tape that isn't going to let it go. So I got this baby strapped down pretty good. Uh, I got sort of an X formation over the table, pulling it down more on the front of the machine than over the top of the casting. I have this uh, big tall strap and then I have one back here to get the column uh, toward the back of the trailer because I think if this thing sees any one big serious force it's probably going to be if I had to hit the brakes hard or something so I want it to really be reinforced or uh, you know sort of <laughs> held from from going forward uh, I think that's pretty stable on there I believe when you do straps like this you're supposed to do like a half twist maybe it's a whole twist I don't know I did a half twist uh, I think that's supposed to help with the the wind making them want to vibrate as you go down the road or something. So I did that and then uh, and then I strapped down the pallet jack handle. That's just gonna ride up here for the trip. And now, because there's a lot of moisture in the air and on the roads and it's not supposed to rain, if I wanted to get a tarp on this thing, that'd be tricky because of all the projections. And I think it would just rip the tarp pretty quickly. And so I'm not even gonna bother tarping this thing. Uh, a little bit of moisture on the surface isn't gonna immediately kill it. It's just gonna sit overnight and then I'm gonna uh, deliver it tomorrow. But I am gonna spray uh, Bow Shield T9. I'm gonna spray this all over the cast iron just to give it a fighting chance uh, against surface rust. So because of the weird lay of the land here, I'm kind of coming uphill and the trailer has to twist a lot on the tandem axles, so I'm parked on the grass. We'll see if I, and I'm two wheel drive, we'll see if I can get out of here without chewing up the lawn. Well, 
Clemmy, are you ready to go deliver the mail? So it's bright and early. The trailer has been sitting overnight with the machine on it and I checked all the straps and everything again. It's looking good and uh, now I need to make my way to New York City, Staten Island to deliver this machine to its new owners. I actually have a pretty heavy duty pickup truck, uh, but yeah, like a year or so ago when I wanted to move a machine and I didn't, uh, I rented a three quarter ton truck from Enterprise, which you can do for, it's like 400 bucks for a couple days. Uh, or U-Haul has like a half ton truck, uh, a lot cheaper. And so if you don't have one or you don't have a buddy who has one, uh, that's something you can do. Um, but I now I own a three quarter ton truck and it is sweet and uh, really useful for stuff like this. So I made it to Staten Island and we delivered the mail. I didn't get any footage of unloading it, uh, but it went pretty smoothly with that sick, sick trailer. And uh, so here, here are uh, my, my happy new customers of the mill. Hey guys. Introduce yourselves. I'm Aaron Zaretsky. And I'm, a, I'm Kevin Kim. Yeah, and you guys got a sweet shop here. Thank you. Yes. And you got a beautiful brand new mill. Absolutely. Looks great in the corner. I'm so jealous of your lighting and your, your open space here. I wish I had this kind of space. Definitely. So yeah. We, we do uh, uh, a lot of different kinds of scenery, fabrication, and whatnot. So we're excited to expand what we can do. Really yeah. Can. yeah. I've been wanting this thing since I was like, you know, I mean, even when we first started, the only thing I was talking about was like, oh, we got to get a mill, we got to do this. And it's just like, it's so surreal to have this in my shop right now. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, the story of how you got it as well. Yeah. How you wanted it for a long time. Oh, I wanted it so bad for so long, and yeah. I finally got it. <laughs> Yeah. Breaks my heart to sell it, but you got to do what you got to do, man. Yeah. Got to make space for other stuff. I'll get another one someday. Uh, and in the meantime, you guys will be making sweet parts on this. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You want to show us the Cadillac real quick? Yeah, we can. <laughs> so this is a 1960 Cadillac Coupe, or what's this the? This is a 62 Special. This is amazing. It is cool. It's the Ghostbusters uh, mobile, the, the whatever it was called. You can see the door is about three and a half feet. Oh my god. <laughs> the turning radius of this thing is uh, yeah. Wow. One day she'll be cleaned up and back <laughs> on the road. It's amazing. <laughs> These mirrors, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many little details on here. And like the fins on the back here. Yeah, they don't they don't do that anymore. They don't do that anymore. Wow. Integrating the tail lights. Like and that. the engine here. Yeah. And do a full rebuild on this baby. You said a 392? This is a 390. 390, wow. Massive. Big boy. That's been a long day. I got up early so that I could bring this machine of mine from Syracuse, New York, uh, five or six hours down the road through Pennsylvania all the way to New York City. Uh, we dropped it off. We got it moved in there. Those guys uh, have sort of a prop shop. They make all different kinds of stuff, and it, it's really cool. I'm excited to see what they do with the machine, and I'm sad that I don't have it. I'll miss it sometimes, but uh, I, I, I got I to gotta prioritize what, what I really focus on, what I really primarily do. And so getting rid of this machine creates more space. Oh, 